take up your cross. Now, I guess unless we look at Scripture, if we look at this Scripture here in Matthew, what, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking for hands raised or answers here, but think for yourself. What, what do you think that means? What does that mean to us when Jesus says, "Take up your cross"? Think of what he went through. Especially knowing that it was coming. You know, I talk a lot about, you know, we have to have the same attitude that Christ had, ready to do whatever it takes. We, we know our lows. We know where we've been. We know what we've dealt with in life. We don't want to ever go back and have to deal with those same messes that we dealt with, the same pain, the same confusion, the same doubt. And we have the ability not, not to ever have to put a substance in our body ever again. We have that. We, we have the ability to never have to go back and harm ourselves and those that we love. We, we never have to do that again. But we have to do the work. We have to do, um, we have to make the changes. We, we have to be transformed, right? We have to become new. We know our old nature, right, is sinful through and through. We can look back and, and think of, and we might even beat ourselves up because of the things that we've done. And, and it's good motivation, right, when you think about those things. Because you never want to do them again. But we have to do the work. You know, as, as I say, God can, you know, take away things that He sees fit to take away. But but here we have Jesus, right? And you see, He's being helped. We never have to go back but we're still going to have to work. We have to take up our cross to be able to make this all work. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, your own selfish ways, your own wanting to do things your way your own easier, softer ways. And we have to take up our cross and follow Jesus. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, help us this morning during this season of Lent where we recognize things that we, we should be letting go of. There's many things that we should be letting go of that mean a lot. Our character defects, our shortcomings, whatever they might be, this morning help us, Lord, to see that sometimes we are just a bit selfish. We are just a bit petty. Um, we are just a bit too Overly, you know, we have false pride and, and sometimes it's hard for us. Help us, Lord, this morning as we look at your word and as we look at what Jesus went through and we look at his words to us. Father, help us to have the same attitude that he had. He went, he was tortured, he was dragged through the streets, he was nailed to a cross for us. He didn't sin. We sin. But He paid that price for us. So help us, Lord, to have the same attitude that Christ had, ready to do whatever it takes to become the men that You've created us to be. Speak to me, Lord, the words that You would have me to know for myself. And speak through me, Lord, the words for each one of us. 
you brought us here for a reason, Lord, help us to respond. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. So really it is sometimes we get a little petty, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go to the motions, right? Take up your cross. I don't want to wait for the kitchen to, to open. I want my coffee, right? <laughs> I want it now. I hear that a lot, right? Take up your cross. You know, you come into a structured environment, but I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. We, we look to God's word and we kind of sometimes the same thing. God's word says this, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to make a meeting. Take up your cross. I don't want to share in a meeting. Take up your cross. I don't want to get a sponsor. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Take up your cross. You have to do the work. You should have the same attitude that Christ had. If you get nothing else from this message, that is the main focus. You need to take up your cross. It's not easy. It's not supposed to be. It's a process for a reason. It's true. We complain about some pretty petty stuff. We don't own our own mess. We don't want to deal with things that are hard. All of the things that you know that you need to do. And listen, I'm not, I'm not yelling at you, right? I'm the same way. We are all the same way. We don't want to do the hard things. We don't want to own our own mess. We don't want to be completely open and honest because it hurts. There's so many things in life that we just rather not do. But there's no growth in that. It's, again, a process. We have to work through. Take up your cross. You don't think that Jesus could have said, you know what, never mind, I don't want to have to go through this. So yeah, even though we whine about some pretty petty stuff, right? It's a lot more than just getting up for devotions or what's for breakfast or what the rules are. Pick up your cross and follow me, right? It means being willing to die in order to follow Jesus. It means willing to die of self, to put behind us our old self. Christ said, whoever wants to save it, this is, this is really important, right? And it might sound a little confusing, but whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever wants to, whoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self, his soul? What good is it for have everything that the, that of this world, you know, the nice cars, the beautiful wife, the big house, right, but lose your soul, <coughs> lose yourself? What good is it? But yet we focus so much in all these things that the world holds up, right? It says, you're nobody unless you have these things. Take up your cross. Christ knew what this meant. He knew he was going to pay a hefty price for our sins. For our sins. This here is... Christ before, right before he knew he was going to be betrayed, beaten and whipped, dragged through the streets, 
and nailed to a cross. He knew. He was a physical body knowing that he's going to have to deal with these things for us. So this was his prayer in the garden. My Father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will done, not mine. What was that song right about? You gotta take up your cup, right? You have to, you have to have the same attitude that Christ had. Willing to even though you might still want to do certain things in life, to say, no, they're behind me. I'm putting all of those behaviors, not just the substance, I'm putting all of that mess behind me, and I'm never going back. And, and listen, man, I know how it hurts. I know what it's like to cut all that mess off. There's a mourning process you go through. It's, your, it's what you knew your whole life, and all of a sudden you can't do it anymore. You know, people look at Scripture like where, where Jesus says, you know, so you're going to have to maybe leave your family. You might going to maybe have to do this. You might have to do these things that are hard. They're not easy. But we're to have the same attitude that Christ had and take up our cross. commitment it's a commitment that we are going to do whatever it takes whatever it takes commitment to Christ means taking up your cross daily giving up your hopes and dreams and possessions even your very life if needed if need be for the cause of Christ if anything in your life does not fit in, within God's will. Now, listen, most of these things we've already lost. A lot of these things we've already lost. What were your <laughs> hopes and, and, and dreams as you were shooting a bag of dope on a corner? Again, Christ says, only if you're willing, you willingly, right? Willingly take up your cross, may you be called his disciple. It's taken from Luke 14, 27. The reward, though, the return on investment, let's say, the reward for this commitment, for this not just mindset, but heart set, <coughs> of taking up your cross daily, being willing, you know, saying, God, please, if it's within your will, look, I'd rather not have to deal with this. See, Christ had that same thing, right? Lord, please, I know this is not going to be easy. Please, Lord, if it's within your will, take this from me. But we still have to most of the time, go through the process. Sit before the judge. Sit before the ex. You know, the money comes out of the paycheck for child support. You got restitution. There's going to be things that you're still going to have to deal with. Your life's not going to be roses. In fact, there's going to be new things that you're going to have to deal with that you've never dealt with before. But we're to have the same attitude that Christ had because the reward is worth the price. Jesus followed his call to death, right? Of self. He says, take up your cross and follow me. With the gift of life in Christ, right? For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life <coughs> for me will find it. Whoever wants to hold on to those old character defects and shortcomings, right? Whoever still wants to hold on to those things that you know are wrong in God's eyes, but you say, you know what, at least I'm not using. We make excuses. We rationalize and justify our behaviors. Even though we know they're wrong in God's eyes. See, if we do that, it says that we lose, 
right? We lose. But when we let go of these things, not just the substances, but all of it, when we let go of these things, we are saved. Some of us are addicted to chaos. We may be so used to crisis that we don't know how to enjoy the calm. Life in recovery may seem boring in comparison to our old ways. We may even miss the excitement and danger. The rewards seem to slow, be slow in coming. The Apostle Paul said, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Weeds spring up quickly, good crops grow slowly, and must be tended steadily. Even before we can see any sprout, it's only in time that we will enjoy the fruit. Weeds spring up fast. Old behaviors come back easy. But doing the right thing and seeing its reward takes work. Jesus suggested that we expand our perspective even further with a view toward eternity. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you want to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways and take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your old life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world to lose your soul? It's not easy saying no to things that look like fun. But we know they're wrong in God's eyes. It's not easy stopping doing things that we've been doing all of our lives. But we know that they're wrong in God's eyes. It is God's will for us to have a rewarding and fulfilled life. It may be easier to adjust to our new way of life if we remember that denying ourselves immediate pleasures will bring a harvest of rich rewards in this life and in the life to come. But we want immediate satisfaction. We want to feel good right now. We want to be able to do the things that we like. Galatians 6.14, As for me, man, never boast about anything except the cross and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world have been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. My interest in this world is crucified. And there's going to be people in this world that no longer have any use for me because they want to live in darkness. And that's going to happen. But take up your cross. Christ died for us. So in this season of Lent, and as we talk about things like prayer and fasting, and we look at things that we should remove from our, our lives, we, we, we eat fish on Friday, or we cut out ham altogether, or whatever that might be, there's far more to it. There's things that we need to completely remove. Right? Our, our old self needs to be crucified with Christ on the cross for us to become the men that God created us to be. For us to be right that new creature, right, that new creation. Um, we have to cut it all off. As long as I'm breathing, I'm always, I'll always be 
there. Trying my best to be as close to God as possible. My interest in Christ comes before all else. We must draw close to God through Christ Jesus to be new and then have the same attitude that Christ had. So my prayer for you is that you do just that. I keep looking up and come to believe Christ is the bread of life. He says, whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. We won't hunger for the things of this world. We won't hunger for the things that we have done all of our lives, even though we know they're wrong. We won't hunger for anything other than Christ. It says, whoever believes in my will, in me, I'm sorry, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty again. We won't thirst after everything that has pulled us down in the first place. But we have to take up that cross. So I'm going to pray. And I don't know if you've ever noticed that in the programs, the program at? In the programs, underneath doxology, it says, the closing prayer is a call to commitment. It is a time to personally commit your life to God through Christ Jesus. By recognizing that Christ is the way to God's plan for your life and realizing your separation from God's plan because of sin, you accept Christ as your personal Savior to deliver you from your sin. That's how it starts. Christ paid for our sins on the cross. So I pray that you understand that and that you accept Christ into your hearts as your personal Savior. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for all you do. Lord, and, and we are to have the same attitude that Christ had, but we find it even hard to humble ourselves before you. Help us, Lord. Take away that false pride that gets in the way. Lord, take away all the obstacles in our minds, in our hardened hearts, Lord. Help us to know the truth and to accept your plan for our salvation. So we come to you now, Lord, each one of us, Father, person, each one of us here, Lord, as we're as we have heard your word and our hearts are bowed, Lord, before you. Help us, Lord. We know that we're sinners. And there's nothing we can do to save ourselves from our sin, Lord, but to accept your plan for our salvation through your Son, Christ Jesus. Help us, Lord, as we hear you now, Father, give us the courage to humble ourselves before you. Laying at your feet, Lord, we come to you, Lord, accepting Christ into our hearts as our personal Savior. We are repentant. We repent of our sins. We never want to go back. We don't want to be that person ever again. We know the pain that we've lived in and that we've caused and it was caused unto us, Lord. So we ask, Father, for forgiveness for our sins. We have the same attitude that Christ had. Coming to you for you to take all of those character defects, all of those shortcomings, all of the sin that we so actively participated in, Lord, please take it from us. We accept Christ into our hearts as a personal Savior and we are new, transformed. You come into our hearts, Lord, and you open our minds and our hearts, Lord, so we can see the mess. 
We can see all those things that we held on to that we knew were wrong, Lord, and you could take them from us, Father. So help us to have that same attitude and lay them all at your feet. Help us. Father, as you speak to our hearts and our minds, there are definitely things that we still do, Lord, but you're, you're speaking to us now. And, and we recognize these behaviors, these, these ways of thinking, whatever they might be, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for speaking to us and showing us. But I ask you, Father, to give us the courage to let go. Take them. Father, you call us, Lord, and, and to start, we, we, we have to do things that we've never done before. We have to change the way we see the world. We have to change the way we see ourselves. We have to see, Lord, how you see us. So as you do, Father, help us to continue in all things to seek the knowledge of your will for our lives, to have a constant acknowledgement of your presence in our lives, Lord. And as you guide us, Father, help us to keep that attitude we are ready to do whatever it takes to sacrifice the old, to put the old behind us, to die of self, and to stay in this relationship with you as you guide us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, for making it possible in this season of Lent as we're letting go of things. Help us also to start doing the things that you would have us to do. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us, for your Spirit's presence, and for the price that was paid on the cross. But mostly, Lord, I thank you, Father, for what we celebrate on Easter morning. Because we too have an opportunity to be brought back from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.